Welcome, everybody, to the Badass Fantasy Baseball Podcast Badass Sessions. This is our maiden journey here, uh, being our first Badass Sessions. What Badass Sessions are learning blocks and hopefully helpful tips and techniques that will help you be a better player. Be a better player out there in fantasy. Maybe you've never played before. It's certainly good for people who are beginning, who've never played in any league at all, never played, or considers herself an intermediate player and they want to get better in fantasy baseball. So these sessions are set up and they'll be uh, recorded uh, one through four uh, sessions of different blocks that'll cover you and get you ready for even and be ready for this season and be ready to really rock and roll. I mean, that's a, the the whole uh, intent here is to make, uh, make it fun and hopefully you'll be able to play better. And uh, if you can compete at a higher level and have fun, how much more fun can you have than that? So welcome aboard to the uh, badass uh, fantasy sports universe, nation, stratosphere, and uh, we'll be having our live streams as uh, as well coming up uh, on Sunday evenings. But this badass session, I'll start out with an introduction because that's what this is all about, is an introduction. You can go to, um, and I'll show you here in a second, you can go to the our, uh, my website at www.badass, spelt with two Z's, badassports.com. That's badass, two Z's, sports.com. If you go there uh, while you're listening to this, uh, you can put on pause or whatever and, and go uh, pull that website up if you'd like. And there's some slides that uh, might help it help you a little better follow along, or you can even just read the slides and, and forego uh, listening to this block at all. But I think we'll reiterate on some of the points in the presentation slides. So it'd probably be a good idea to hang on board. Uh, and, uh, of course, you're with the host of, of Badass uh, Fantasy Baseball podcast, Rudy. I'm from Alvin, Texas. And uh, that's where this production's coming from. We have, uh, I have three people on my staff, me, myself, and I. So this is a one-man band here. But I'm glad to be doing it. I'm looking forward. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, engaging with you in the community of fantasy baseball. You know, there's a lot of firsts in everybody's life. And certainly, uh, with respect to base, uh, fantasy baseball, I had one of those first as well. And um, that was in 2017. I had been playing previous to that uh, fantasy football for years and was a commissioner in the, in the Yahoo Fantasy Football League, Friends and Family League that I still do today. Uh, we just had our 10th anniversary year in our league. So I'd already been familiar with fantasy sports in general, but I love baseball. And uh, my brother, uh, who lives up in Indiana, had asked me, hey, I'm in a friends league uh, with some buddies of mine, and uh, would you like to you know, join in on the league? And it was a 12-team um, categories head-to-head league. <clears throat> so... Yeah, it sounded pretty. It sounded pretty cool, actually, to me. So uh, at the time, and I and uh, I've recently retired, so uh, uh, I had some time, and uh, I thought, why not? So I played, uh, got in this guy's in the, in the league up there uh, with the boys from Indiana, where I was actually born and raised. Spent the first twenty uh, two years of my life there. So I joined the league to play these guys up here in Hoosier Land. And, uh, you know, I thought, you know, why not? People play can Candy Crush. People go golfing, you know, whatever. And so I'm going to give this fancy baseball thing a try. Well, I finished the season 11th out of 12, 12 teams. So uh, that was quite crushing to me. 
you know I, i'm i'm quite competitive guy when i'm taking my time to play something a game of some kind i love to have fun but i love to compete as well and finishing 11th was i think really got me going and got me fired up because it kind of presented a challenge um something i'm used to having you know i grew up um grew up on a farm and uh, spent spent a career in the army and uh I, i'm always up for a challenge even today and fantasy baseball is quite the challenge and i found that out in the first year it kind of humbled me maybe that was a great experience maybe the best experience <laughs> but it did m make me want to go roll my sleeves up and definitely play the next year and be better at it so that was kind of my journey to start into fantasy uh fantasy uh, baseball and and the attraction's easy for me as i'm sure it is with most of you is i grew up as a kid loving baseball i played baseball in the little league as as many years as i could i think i played till i was 17 so i started around six years old so i loved playing baseball and of course, in those years, uh, when I started, was the you know very early 70s uh, playing baseball, uh, Little League baseball, and growing up, uh, having childhood stars, being in Indiana, I had, uh, of course, the Big Red Machine was, was notwithstanding one of the greatest, uh, greatest baseball teams ever, and, and any, you know, you don't even realize it when you're going through it. It's like, oh my gosh, you just think it's just always like this. But uh, growing up, uh, watching people like Pete Rose and Johnny Bench, um, and growing up with it was just some great teams too. Uh, but Mike Schmidt comes to mind, George Brett, and uh, Steve Garvey. I think those were all really awesome players, <clears throat> and uh, awesome pitchers. I used to like uh, Raleigh Fingers growing up, and and Goose Gossage, Tom Seaver. Uh, pitchers like that Steve Carlton so I grew up with uh, in an era of uh, as a kid with some great baseball players and then I remember uh, so many times listening on the radio with my dad um, uh, in our truck on the farm to Marty Brenneman and Joe Nuxhall calling the Reds games on the radio and uh, I heard countless games on the radio didn't didn't always watch in those days games on tv because unlike today where you know you can get mlb tv and watch every single game of the year you know of the season uh, from every team and it wasn't like that then so the radio was a really important tie to baseball but um and also a tie-in as i grew up too that ties into fantasy baseball and maybe it connects with you is not only loving baseball, maybe you played baseball growing up, um, but maybe you collected baseball cards. I know I did as a young kid, and I still have cards today. And if that's something uh, that you're interested in, uh, I think you'll find a good community here because at times we'll tie in a, a card or something about uh, something with respect to cards. And I have uh, some displayed right behind me here. And uh, so we'll we'll certainly engage in that in our community here uh, within the uh, Badass Fantasy Baseball podcast universe. So, so basically here I am in retirement. You know, I'm finding myself ha in, you know, happy with playing fantasy baseball. And I'm still happy playing fantasy baseball uh, going into my sixth year. And I do it for fun. Um, and this po podcast was really born out of the idea that I, f I feel like there's others out there, more uh, maybe more like me, who, who love baseball, uh, love America's pastime, and could use a community of like-minded people to, to thrive in and, and really uh, uh, expand beyond just playing fantasy baseball by yourself online or, or you know with with uh maybe friends and family from a distance or whatever or in uh public leagues where you you don't know folks um so 
So I urge you to come uh, uh, gravitate towards the badass fantasy sports universe. Uh, I believe this podcast is going to be fun. I mean, I'm not a professional broadcaster. You know, I didn't go to Syracuse and I'm not a, you know, I'm not a, a, a audio engineer nor a, a, a video videographer, whatever uh, professional titles are out there. I'm, a, I'm purely a amateur at this production thing. So I think at times you'll probably look at this and say, Jesus, that kind of sucks. But but stay with me because I think the information and as I get a comfort factor with with all this, I think when you see and engage in this process uh, process in this community, I think you'll just hear things that are different, you know, a little bit here. For one thing, I'm, uh, you know, uh, it's, I'm not trying to become some um, superstar uh, fantasy baseball guru uh, with the most viewers, the most likes, the most loves, the most kisses, the most hugs, whatever you want to describe six level of success out here. And I'm not really interested in. I'm interested in building a community however big or however small, of, of like-minded uh, fancy baseball fans out there. And we'll talk turkey. So uh, I, think, I think one of the questions you might ask early on and, you know, uh, when you're making a ju- judgment about what are you going to listen to, who are you going to listen to for fancy baseball information, or who are you going to listen to uh, in general – just casually uh, uh, about ba- uh, fancy baseball, uh, whether it's on an audio, a video format, whether it's live or whether it's recorded uh, episodes. Um, why should I listen to Rudy out there in Alvin, Texas, some old guy out there, uh, and spend my time listening listening to him and I would ask that question, too. I mean, I think we all do, and we spend some time on YouTube or some of our other formats listening or watching other fantasy uh, f- baseball podcasts, how they do it. And some of these productions are just really extravagant and really uh, super nice, and I kudos to them. Um, but I think the why you should listen is maybe is I'm going to do a humble brag right here and just tell you that as I said before in 2017, where I finished 11th out of a 12-team league in the Yahoo Fantasy um, uh, Yahoo Fantasy app, uh, yeah, uh, the Yahoo Fantasy platform. See, I'm, I told you I'm not a broadcast professional. the The Yahoo Fantasy Baseball uh, platform is what I primary primarily use, and when I'm primarily I refer to in this podcast but uh, that's where I started in 2017 and through the years over the next few years um, I got serious more serious every year and I started to learn about these what Yahoo calls these performance uh, performance levels and so I kind of looked into it because I kind of likened it to my son uh, uh, who he plays uh, he's a young young uh junior high kid and he he uh, he games and plays games and it's it, it's kind of similar talking to him like um he has levels and stuff and I'm not a gamer so forgive me if I'm I sound ignorant about terminology and gamer ter- terminology but I think the tie in is kind of like that is is that when um when you when you're gaming, there's certain performance levels or achievement levels that these kids earn by playing at certain levels. And I, you know, I guess that's kind of important to some of them. And, you know, they earn badges or blah, 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 whatever the accolades are. Similarly to that, in Yahoo uh, Fancy Baseball, they do a tracking system that tracks performance levels of fancy baseball players throughout the year not only throughout the year but year over year and attain historical data 
and then uh, wrap it up in an algorithm that they they um, they uh, produce performance levels the entry level performance level and if you've played fancy football you know this uh, especially on yahoo but, but if you're on other formats you, you probably un understand this but if you don't this is why i'm going to go to the start in case you don't know you you're a beginner so um so when you go um go go in and start playing fancy baseball uh, Yahoo's tracking all these performances that you do, your winning percentage, uh, your head-to-head -head win loss records, and um, um, your uh, performance in and against other competitors. And most importantly, what level of performance level are, are is your opponent? It sounds like the NCAA selection committee, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, uh, your opponent's schedule and in college football as well, picking the picking the, who's going to go to the uh, championship uh, uh, playoffs is is based a lot of it is opponent strength and strength of schedule, what have you. So in a you know I'm going a long way around to explain this, but Yahoo has these performance levels that they've been tracking since as far back as 2009 so starting in, in 2017 i started out like everybody starts out in the bronze level of performance and the next level is silver then gold then platinum and then the final level of performance level achievement in yahoo is diamond um, so each level as the years went on from 2017, I made a steady climb. And then in this past year, uh, season 2022, Major League Baseball season, fantasy baseball season, I achieved my goal of attaining the diamond level uh, performance level in Yahoo. I'm very proud of that. And I think that really set the tone for starting this podcast ready or not now this season i felt like i i have something to offer and in a long way of explaining why that's the why i feel like in a, in a humble most humble way i don't feel like i'm any better than anybody else and i assure you if you listen to the podcast and you go through the badass sessions you are going to be better and and I don't care about that. I spent a long time in the Army, and I used to tell my soldiers when I was a leader, I'm not worried about you moving up the ladder because I'm moving up with you. So, And that's why I'm doing this podcast is to spread the, the wealth, my love of the game, learning the game well, and hopefully some of these uh, tips that help me achieve the diamond level uh, will also be able to help you. The diamond level, by the way, represents, according to Yahoo, the top 1% of Yahoo uh, baseball, fantasy baseball players. So that's the why. My intent's to share that uh, information and build relationships. A real quick hit on history. Um, and I will and I will say, uh, that you can go to the badassports.com site and pull these slides up. Um, you can either come back and refer to them later. You can pause this and go back to them. And, uh, and you'll see. You'll see right here. This is on the screen. You'll see that this is the badassports.com website right here. So and you can go down here where it starts talking about badass. You see this um, arrow here, and it'll go down. This is the first episode, and this is what we're talking about now. <coughs> so I'm not going to stay in this screen forever because you can go to it and pull that up and, uh, and follow right along with uh with this um 
Now let me refresh this real quick and I'll show you. There we go. Okay, so you can go through the slides just like this, just like I'm going through now on the website. And these are the slides. There's not very many in this first session because it's just basically an intro. But you can go through that. I'm not going to walk through every slide and just kind of let that kind of uh, marinate, so to speak. But because you can go to the website and pull those slides up anytime and look at them they're there they'll be there for all four section or four sessions and uh so they'll be posted up here uh, uh very soon and get you ready before the the uh, fancy baseball season begins so we're back here with my badass self <laughs> Humble brag. You can be a badass too. One of my sayings and something you'll hear a lot of when I'm talking is, and I don't mean it to be a negative, I mean it as a challenge and a positive. And I always say, if you suck, it's your fault. And and it's the truth. So I really believe that. And and I would suck too if I'm not listening to folks and, and I didn't just get here and uh, achieve a diamond level just by being some super uh, – super smart, super duper, you know, graduate of the Fantasy Baseball Academy somewhere. Um, you know, I learned, and it, and it took a lot of other good people with good information uh, and, and, and research and reading from others' expertise that's helped me get here today. I didn't get, wouldn't have got anywhere uh, near uh, um, my achievement without the help of many others. But the history of uh, fantasy um, baseball really came, goes back to like 1980. And it was just simply, and you can Google this to, to look into it further, but it was a bunch of uh, journalists, I guess they were kind of friends too, and they hung out at this restaurant and they just developed this game, you know, um, before, you know, I think they used box scores. And again, I'm no expert on the history of fantasy baseball. But they get basically got together and were kind of the pioneers of what we we know as fancy baseball today. Um, and you'll hear the term roto or the full word; uh, it's abbreviation for rotisserie. And you'll hear that maybe early on. And I used to think, "What the hell are they talking about?" And I'm hungry. Start talking about rotisserie. I'm looking for where where's it where's the chicken at? But anyway, I I really. Uh, I really uh, think in, in the the bit, the gist of it was was rotisserie or the term roto just basically came from it was the name of the restaurant that they said that that these guys got together and kind of pioneered fancy baseball. So, and that's that's really all the history because that's the only thing that was confusing. I know when I started, I kept hearing roto and. It's ba ba now it's basically referring to a specific scoring format uh, in a league, but we'll talk about that later. That's a lot to talk about. Um, and I will say, um, I will say, according to uh, according to the Fantasy Sports and Gaming Association, again you can Google this as well. In in twenty twenty two last season, there were more than fifteen million fantasy baseball players. Uh, people playing uh, fantasy. I call them players, by the way. Let me back that up. I, I know a lot of people in the industry refer to us or people who play fantasy baseball as fa fantasy baseball managers. And I, I think that too. But I kind of, but I refer to us as fantasy baseball players. I mean, I just, I don't know. So if, don't get, if you get confused, uh, when I talk about fantasy baseball players i'm talking about us those who play this game called fantasy baseball so according to that uh fantasy sports and gaming association 15 million and uh that's uh, represents 25 percent of all fantasy sports so uh, of course the dominating uh, the dominating sport of fantasy is obviously football but i don't know what 
percentage they make up. But baseball, fantasy baseballers, we make up about a quarter of the total fantasy sports population. In 2006, uh, fancy, there were 4 million uh, fantasy baseball players. So we, you know, it's increased uh, exponentially over the years. And I think I think that trend will continue. I do. And okay, so one of the big questions before you just if you're a beginner out there and you just don't know where to start, you're listening to all these podcasts and they're throwing statistics out and this and that and this percentage and this WOBA and this WIF percentage and this ERA and WIP and this projection based on an X FIP and a X WOBA and a, a X this and X that. Um, it can be very overwhelming and confusing. So I think the essence, if you're starting out, is really ask yourself, why play? Why do you want to play? A lot of people do it for a lot of reasons, but this is kind of a gut check time before you get invested in something that uh, encompasses seven days a week, seven days a week of action over a six month period of time. So um so it's gut check. Get in there, suck that gut up like we did in the army. Exhale, let it out. Okay. So what is bringing you to fancy baseball if you're a beginner? Ask yourself that. Are you interested in playing for fun? Are you do you have a money interest? Do you do you, do you have that gambling aspect or you know that that aspect that you want to integrate into fantasy sports in general and fantasy baseball as it relates to this podcast. Um, I will tell you that's a big decision. You can sometimes do a hybrid. There's no no right or wrong answer with respect to, to whether you play for, for fun alone, um, for money, or a combination of both or whatever. And the knowledge and the information that you need to do that successfully is is really the same because we're playing the same game, uh, whether you have money on it or not. Um, and I think sometimes I think we're just we want to find something that gets our competitive juices going. Uh, I'm not trying to sell you anything other than just base fancy baseball in general. Fancy baseball, if you're looking for a challenge and something to really sink your teeth into and challenge your mind to and uh, really get you engaged with what's going on in baseball today, I think it greatly improves that when you turn on a baseball game or go to a baseball game and you're playing fantasy baseball, it enriches that experience beyond beyond it it certainly did for me beyond my wildest uh imagination uh you know i feel so much more knowledgeable and across the board of of who's playing and you know who's who's doing what and it's just amazing so hopefully you'll find it fun uh which is the key it's fun in my opinion anything sustaining or uh, is gonna have something that you really enjoy uh, love and have fun doing or it just won't sustain. But whatever the reason, you need to nail that down because it's going to help you decide on what type of leagues you join. Or first of all, what kind of platform you play on, what kind of you know league, and what have you. Um, another big factor is I'll allude go back to what I said. The commitment for fantasy baseball is unlike. Uh, certainly football in comparison. Football will play, you know, maybe Thursday, Thursday, Sunday, and Monday. And they'll do that over a period of, of, a, of, of a 17 week season. And you take base fancy baseball plays games, and fancy baseball action happens seven days a week with a few exceptions, all-star break, and uh, we'll play for six months every day. So you're engaged in a, in a fancy sport that you're engaged in every day for six months. 
So think about that and where that fits into your time schedule. Determining how much time you'll, you have to spend towards this will go a long way in helping you decide on what type of league that you uh, and how many leagues that you join as well. The teams uh, and the teams that you're going to compete with during the baseball season. You know, like just how, how many teams are you going to are you going to field? And if this is your first year, you'll you'll want to uh, you'll want to give that a, a really good thought and a really good look. You really will. So this thing's freezing up for some reason. Hello. Hmm. Okay. All right. So determining uh, how much time you spend is super important. Um, if you have, if you played fantasy, uh, uh, any fantasy sport, you know uh, it's somewhat of a commitment. No matter, you know, whatever you decide to, uh, to commit to. So what, whatever you're doing, uh, uh, and you decide on doing, just go forward with it. And uh, you probably, if you're a beginning player, <clears throat> you probably will want to limit the number of teams your first year. I'm not saying you have to. <clears throat> I'm just saying that it's a good idea to uh, to maybe to to maybe do. Um, uh, I know my first year I played in I played in one league. That was it. So, but at, you know, at times, I mean, that's, it could be different with everybody that, uh, depending on what, you know, what you, uh, what level player you are and, and how much time. It's super important to decide what, uh, what type of um, league you certainly are going to play in and be a part of. I'm trying to pull something up here. Seems like it's locked up. Kind of, sort of. Okay, folks. Well, look, uh, we're going we're gonna to stop uh, this first session at this point in time. It's, it's been a pleasure. I have uh, other things to talk about beyond how much time to dedicate uh, towards your playing in fantasy baseball uh, this season. And we'll also talk about uh, much, much more in the upcoming Badass Sessions. I hope you'll join me, Rudy, the host of the Badass Fantasy Baseball Podcast. I look forward uh, to seeing you, meeting you, and engaging with you throughout the season. Good luck. And remember, if you suck, that's your fault. Goodbye. <laughs>